You've probably dreamt of owning your very own property, but something keeps holding you back. I know exactly how that feels and I struggled with the exact same issue before I got into property. I decided to make this video where I share 10 practical steps that you can implement immediately to get you to where you need to go. At the end of the day, action is very important and this video will get you into action. Without wasting any time, the first step I took was to decide and mentally commit to buy property. I know this might seem strange and I made this number one for a reason because if you can't commit mentally towards the buying process, you will never succeed in property. This is a very scary commitment. So the importance of the desire or the right mentality to invest in property is super important. Focus on this mentality before you jump into it because if your mindset is not strong enough, you will probably quit at the first challenge. This is unfortunately something that happens to a lot of people because you are excited once you start but once you get to your first problem you can't figure out a solution or the solution that you want and many people quit at this stage. The second step was to focus on my income and savings. Unfortunately if you want to follow the traditional route of buying property with a bond or borrowing money from a bank you need a income. You need a steady income you have to prove to the banks that your income is more than your expenses, you have money left at the end of the month and that money can go towards savings. When I started I really didn't have a big salary but I was still able to live below my means and create disposable income that can go towards savings. If you are not able to save any money I would suggest focusing on budgeting or the 101 of finances to create a steady income and focus on saving first before you move on to investing. This will mitigate the risk that comes with investing. Again, the importance of living within or below your means is so important people try to impress other people that they don't even like with stuff that they can't afford. So make sure that you avoid consumer debt and focus on creating a steady income with a good savings. Number three was to focus on my credit score. I know this is not a very popular topic but I had to focus on my credit score because at that stage of my life I really didn't have any credibility. I had to focus on building credit. I decided to use a credit card for daily expenses but I always made sure that I paid it off immediately. I never paid a cent in interest. That basically proved to the lenders that I have financial discipline to work with a credit card. This helped me improve my credit score overall. So if you do not know where you stand at the moment, do a free credit check and make sure that you understand your financial situation. If you have any issues on your credit score, make sure that you rectify those issues before you go to the next step. Your credit score combined with your income and your savings will determine your affordability and that brings us to the next step. Number four is to do a pre-approval. I went ahead and did a pre-approval with a bond originator and this was a pretty serious step because this is how they determine how much money you qualify for a loan. With my low salary I think I qualified for 750,000 Rand but now I knew exactly the price class that I can afford so it's very important to do a pre-approval because you can't view a property worth a million Rand if you can only qualify for 750,000 Rand. That brings us to number five and it's building a good team. At the end of the day property is a people game and you will never be able to do everything on your own. So I decided to focus on building a good team from the beginning so that I have people that can help me buy back my time and of course I was able to learn from these professionals. Some of the team members you need is a mentor which is a very important factor once you get started in property as well as a accountant someone that does your taxes and your structuring. Then you need to focus on a rental agent, a good real estate agent, then of course a bond originator, then last but not least someone that can help you with general maintenance. Once I had the right team members I needed to focus on setting up the right structures. If you've watched this channel before you know the importance of buying property in a separate entity and never buying it in your own name. Luckily I had Prosperity Enterprises to help me with all my structuring 
and feel free to reach out to them and use my name as reference because they ultimately helped me to get where I am today. Of course, there's cost involved with the right structuring, but that's the fundamentals of buying property. If you do not invest in these structures from the beginning, you are actually setting yourself up for failure. I basically started with a family trust and a property trust, and as my portfolio grew, my structures grew as well. Number seven is getting to the exciting part, and this is something that I really enjoyed. It was doing the necessary research. Research involves understanding location, location, location. It's very important to understand the different type of property strategies, whether it's a multi-let or a single let. And you also need to understand the demand in a certain area. This will obviously be different for each and every individual, depending on your age, your risk appetite, and of course, the money that you have available. This is something that you need to focus on and make sure that you understand exactly what property strategy you want to follow so that you can determine in which areas you should focus. Once we did our research, we need to start focusing on running the numbers. We can't simply cross our fingers and hope that we will buy a good investment property. You need to make sure that you understand how the numbers work. Basic stuff like gross yield, net yield, return on investment or internal rate of return are some of the formulas that you need to master. Luckily, you do not need to be a math wizard to understand how to run the numbers on properties. I wanted to focus on the numbers so much that eventually I got analysis paralysis where I felt like I know the numbers so well, I need to move on to the next step. So make sure and be aware of this because this is a real thing. Once we understand the numbers and we have identified a few potential deals, then we can schedule viewings. Viewings is a very fun and a very good way to get practical experience and this is a part that I really enjoyed. I remember scheduling so many different viewings in one week so that I can get practical experience and I remember asking some of the stupidest questions but it was such a great way to learn. It's important to ask any question that you can because at the end of the day you always need to be willing to learn. Once I viewed the properties I eventually got one that made financial financial sense, I understood the numbers and I actually wanted to commit to make an offer. This is number 10 and this is the last step and probably the most scariest step of them all. This felt like signing my life away to the devil because you are actually committing to a 20 or a 30 year bond with the bank and you need to pay that back no matter what so you will always be liable for that debt. That feels so scary when I say it out loud, but at the end of the day, your first property is going to be the most difficult one. And once you get used to it, your second, third or 10th property feels like second nature. It's very important to understand the OTP or the offer to purchase because this is a legally binding agreement because you can't just sign it and make an offer and later on decide you don't want the property anymore. I remember how I sat down with the real estate agent and ask them to explain each and every line of the offer to purchase so that I'm completely aware of what I'm getting into. This is also something I recommend doing, especially if it's your first property. Make sure you get an agent that's willing to guide you through the buying process. At the end of the day, I wish I had these 10 steps when I started because it will make your journey much easier. Don't worry about number 10 if you are still focusing on number one. Also remember, do these steps on your own time and don't compare yourself with anyone else. If you want to learn more about property investing, consider enrolling in my in-depth property course where I start from the beginning up until the more advanced stuff and I explain everything in so much more detail. If you like this video and if you learned at least one thing, show me some love, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share this video with your friends or family.